So the DJI Osmo Action 4 is a great camera choice for capturing time lapses. In today's video, I'm going to show you the tools and settings you need to capture the very best time lapses with this tiny little camera. There are three basic tools that I use that I recommend having if you want to get the very best with this camera. First tool I recommend having is a tripod. Now it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be a basic tripod like this one. This one is a tripod selfie stick combo from Mulanzi. It's a great price. I love it. It's very versatile. And when you want to use it as a selfie stick, it'll go out 57 inches. But then when you want to use it as a tripod, it has these nice wide feet at the bottom. It's got a good solid base. It's not likely to tip over easily. And with time lapses, it's really important to have the camera stationary and to not have the camera moving. The second item I recommend having is a power bank. The reason you want a power bank is because the battery on your Osmo Action 4 is only going to last about an hour and a half to two hours max when shooting a time lapse. And you don't want to have the experience of your time lapse ending right at the best part. So I recommend picking up a power bank. This one from Anchor. I use pretty much every time I use my action cameras and I love it. It's a great price and it holds a ton of power. And by the way, I'll link to all these accessories in the description below if you want to check them out. And the third item I recommend having is ND filters. This pack right here from Freewell, these are specifically for the Osmo Action 4. And these are really useful. I'll show you in a moment why you want these for time lapses. But basically, these will allow you to have more control over the shutter speed and the exposure triangle as a whole. And these are going to help you get really good, smooth, good results in your time lapses. Results that look really good, especially if you're creating a time lapse on a bright sunny day or doing a sunset time lapse. These are a must. So next, we're going to get into the settings that I recommend for capturing the best time lapses on the Osmo Action 4. Once you're in time lapse mode, what we're going to do is we're going to swipe up from the bottom. And what you're going to see is you're going to see these options right here. So you want to make sure, first of all, that the top that you have time lapse selected. And then at the bottom, you want to do custom. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the upper right up here. You want to make sure that's set to 4K. 4K is going to get the very best results. And with time lapse mode, there's not really a reason to shoot at any lower resolution. You definitely want to do 4K. So we're going to swipe up to set these additional parameters. First thing I recommend is right here, make sure it's set to infinity. You can set a video duration and it will stop the time lapse automatically if you do, if you were to set one of these. And that's going to be how long the eventual resulting video file will be. But I recommend just doing infinity. That way you have complete control over when you start and stop your time lapse. For the interval up here, this is largely a preference and it does depend on how long of a time lapse you're creating. If you're doing a daytime time lapse or a sunset time lapse, I recommend anywhere from two seconds up to five seconds. And basically what this means is your camera will be getting one frame every five seconds if you have it set to five. If you have a set to two seconds, it's going to be getting a frame every two seconds. So if I'm doing a time lapse sunset, I like to do two seconds because there's a lot of colors there that happen kind of quickly with a sunset or sunrise. But if I'm doing daytime with the clouds, then oftentimes I'll go up to about five seconds. You can always shorten your eventual time lapse later on, or you can speed it up to make it faster. But those are the settings that I recommend for the interval. What we're going to do after we've set our interval, so we're going to go over here and click on the right. And first thing you want to do is you want to make sure Pro is selected up there in the upper right. Pro is going to unlock the options here that we want to have. And first thing you want to do is go here to Exposure. And this is where the bulk of our settings are going to be changed. You want to make sure to select Manual right here. It's going to probably be on Auto by default, but you want the M for Manual. What we want to do first of all is we want to set the shutter speed. So the shutter speed is right here. And for a really good time lapse, I recommend having that shutter speed anywhere from 1 over 120 down to about 1 over 30. Anything in that range is great for a daytime time lapse because it's going to give you those really smooth frames that flow really nicely into each other. And it's going to look really good. If you get to anything faster than 120, the frames are going to start to get sharper. And sharper frames don't always look the best in time lapses. They feel jumpy. They don't feel smooth. So I really recommend the 1 over 120 or slower. I personally, I try to do about 1 over 30. And that's where the ND filters come in. So what you'll see up here is you'll see this EV guide up here. And this is the exposure value. That's what that represents. Now, if I was outdoors right now where it's brighter, this is going to probably say 
exposure plus three. It's going to be really white and blown out. That's where you'd want to use your ND filters. What you want to do is you want to play around with these a little bit. You can pop the ND filter on like that. And what I recommend, if you're doing a daytime time lapse and you have the shutter speed set to one over 30, you're probably going to need ND32. You're going to need those sunglasses for your Osmo Action 4 in order to filter out some of that bright light from the sun. And that's going to allow you to operate a slower shutter speed. If you're doing a sunset time lapse, you're probably going to need anywhere from ND8 to ND16. And of course, if you put the shutter speed higher, you're not going to be letting quite as much light into the camera with a faster shutter speed. So you might have to adjust the ND filter there accordingly as well. And then, of course, if you have to really fine tune it, if ND32 is too dark, but ND16 is too bright, you want to err on the side of too dark and have it a little bit underexposed. So that's where you might have to play with the ISO values as well, which we'll get into in a moment. But the ND filters are your friend with really fine tuning and getting that slower shutter speed. And what you want to end up with up here where it says EV, you want to have that as close to zero as possible. Anywhere from negative 0.3 to positive 0.3 is going to be acceptable. Anything outside of those ranges and you're either going to have really underexposed or really overexposed time lapses and you don't want either of those. I find that 1 over 30 is my preferred shutter speed there and then I utilize ND filters to get that exposure value where I want it to be. If you didn't have the shutter speed or ISO set to a manual value, those would change to adjust for that lighting. But the reason we don't want to have those set to auto is because it's going to introduce flicker into your time lapse as the lighting fades to darkness in the case of a sunset, and you don't want that. And also you'll see flicker throughout the day if those values are constantly changing. So setting static values here is definitely the way to go to get the very best time lapses. So with ISO over here, I recommend setting it as low as possible, which means 100 is generally going to be the preferred value. But if you have to fine tune it to get your exposure value where it needs to be, I recommend not going any higher than 400 as much as possible. Once you get above 400, there is going to be a lot of digital noise and grain in that footage, and it's not going to look as good. So once you've tweaked your settings here accordingly, you're going to hit confirm. And then for white balance, I recommend setting a static value here, and I recommend setting it to 5000K. If you are doing a sunrise or a sunset, 6500K is a great option as well. But most of the time, I just keep it at 5000K. You can always change that later on when editing pretty easy to do, especially if you have a static value there where your entire time lapse is going to be based on that single white balance value. You definitely don't want to keep that set to auto. For the field of view, you have a couple options, but when you're doing a time lapse, I just recommend keeping it at wide. It's going to give you the most in your scene and it's going to look the best. For the format, you've got a couple different options here. The first option is video. And what you're going to get with video is just a single .mp4 video file. But you also have the option of video plus JPEG or the option of video plus raw. And it's interesting that the Osmo Action 4 can do both photos and video at the same time simultaneously. On some other action cameras, you have to pick one or the other. But on the Osmo Action 4, you can do both at the same time. So what I do is I always do video plus raw. Because later on, if I want to dig a little bit deeper and edit those raw photos to really get the best results, I'll have them right there and ready to edit. So I do video plus raw at all times there because the raw files have a lot more detail to work with when editing. The JPEG files simply don't store as much data in the file to bring out later on when editing. So there you have it. Those are the settings that I recommend for capturing the best time lapses on the Osmo Action 4. If you're curious about how to get the best low light footage on the Osmo Action 4, check out this video right here. And if you're curious about the cinematic best settings that I recommend for the Osmo Action 4, check out this video right here.